Welcome to Excel 2010, the basics of formulas. So what are Excel formulas? Well, it's the reason Excel was created. Uh, they can be as simple as a 2 plus 2 calculation or as complex as a, a function uh, that's nested with multiple functions in it. Once you've created it, Excel will do the work for you. The three steps to formulas. Step one is to create a header to frame your data. You create a header simply by making it bold. It's a good idea to use something like the days of the week if that's what you're using in your formula. Autofill handle is a great way to increase those days of the week. It's at the bottom right corner of every cell. You simply click and drag it as soon as you have that crosshair. So you click and drag Monday and it becomes every day of the week, etc. So use autofill to help create those frames. So now that we've got our structure of where we are going to put our values, now we enter our values. You simply type in the numbers. You don't have to put them all in. You can always put in your calculation and then just put in your values as you get them. And values, by the way, is numbers in this case, whenever you're doing a formula. And then finally, step three, you write the formula. Now, in Excel, there's two places to put your formula. You would click first in the cell to say this is where I want it to appear, and then you click in the formula bar to actually do the data entry. And notice I put this formula in as equals, so that tells me that all formulas start with the equal sign. And then I put in the value from D3 plus, and I typed in the plus sign, the value from E3. Well, that'll work. That's a formula, but it's kind of cumbersome for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that I have to duplicate the same data that I've already put in here. I have to put it in again. I don't want to have to do that. Plus, what's the chance of me getting it wrong? Also, what happens if this date sundries changes and increases, and I'm going to have to change the subtotal as well. So while this will work, while I, using values will work in a formula, there's really a better way to do it. But we've chosen to use values this time, so uh, when I'm done, I have to tell it I'm done. And to do that, right on the formula bar, there's an X that says, nope, don't, don't want to do it. It's the same as hitting the escape key on your keyboard. Or the check, and the check means yes, accept it. And that's the same as hitting the enter key on your keyboard. And once you do that, your value, or the answer, will now appear in the cell. While in the formula bar, and you can see why it's called a formula bar, the formula still appears. So you'll have two different things. One is the formula itself, and the other is the value. But I use a cell reference. In a cell reference, that means I simply say D3 plus E3. So whatever happens to be in D3 or E3 will appear. Because it's a cell reference, I, might, I have a lot more options now. For example, A1 plus B1 are two cells in the same worksheet. I know that because there's no other uh, syntax, there's no other way to identify the cells except by their cell refer reference, their cell name. There's the intersection of A1 and B1. However, in the second one, notice I have a word here, list, with an exclamation point. That exclamation point is known as a bang notation, and it is a separator. Uh, that bang is a separator between the name of another worksheet and the cell in that worksheet. So this one, this A1, is from the worksheet that my answer is in, whereas this one is from a different worksheet, and that's separated by the name of the, wor of the cell itself. So those are two different cells in two different worksheets. The third one, you can see here, has now the name of a workbook in it. And so it is the workbook budget, 2011 budget, and the worksheet marketing, and the cell E2, which is an entirely different workbook from where my answer is and where B7 is. Automatically, all of that can be put in without me having to do any typing. So what is formula mode? I simply click on the cell and it appears in the formula. So what makes that happen? Have you ever seen a little dog that loves to fetch 
I call that formula mode. That little dog that will jump in the pool and jump in the lake and doesn't care, just wants to go fetch that ball. Well, if you think of that little dog with its two paws, those two paws are the equal sign. The equal sign is what turns Excel into formula mode. I simply put in an equal sign here, and now everything I click in will appear in the formula. So I've clicked in D3, it appears. I click. I have to type in the mathematical operator, the plus sign, and then I click on E3 and it'll appear. If I can see a different worksheet, it will automatically put in the worksheet name. If I can see a different workbook and click on that, it will automatically put in all of that name, that, that syntax that we saw. What if you have more than one? This is something that Albert Einstein knew that all mathematicians know, that uh, Excel knows, and so we must know it too, and that is the mathematical order of operations. Okay, if we just add something simple like 5 plus 6, that's 11. We only have one mathematical operator, and that's easy. However, if I want to add a second mathematical operator, now 11 times 10, that's the second one, the answer should be 110, right? then why does Excel give us exactly half of that? 65. So what's going on here? Well, that's because we didn't understand the mathematical order of operation. The mathematical order of operations is only needed when you have more than one mathematical operator, or plus, uh, di uh, divide, multiply, uh, subtract. Those are mathematical operators. And you must follow them in order. And a good way to remember that is to please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. In other words, in this formula, it's going to follow the multiplication first. And that's where we get the 60 from. Then it's going to do addition, and that's where we get the 65. So if we were to fix this so that it would follow the order that we want and not the mathematical order of operations, we would first put in parentheses. And that will make the Excel read our formula the way we want it to read. Now it's time to look at the difference between relative versus absolute. This is one of those a little more complex, a little hard to understand concepts. Hopefully this will make sense. Let's say that I've got my formula. I've got 5 plus 6, and my formula is a1 plus b1. And I want to use my autofill to drag it all the way down, right? Wouldn't that make sense? We know our autofill, and that'll give us what we call a relative change. That means that for whatever I put in a2 and b2, the formula here will be a2 plus b2, and it'll be correct. In other words, as I bring my, my uh, formula down, it will change it based on what row it happens to be in. That's called a relative change, and that is exactly what we want in this situation. It's a, it's a good thing, but it's mostly good. So when is relative not good? Well, for example, when you're trying to copy a formula. Let's say that I want to take what's in uh, F5 here and also have it appear here problem is, was when I use copy and paste, it automatically pasted the formula, but it created a relative change. So the original formula, F2 plus F3 plus F4, has now become F4 plus F5 plus F6. And that's wrong because now it's taking the answer that I wanted and putting it inside the formula and adding itself, essentially. So we don't want that. We don't want to copy-paste. So what do we do instead? We link. And to link, you simply say, whatever's in F5, I want to also appear here. Now, this is something that's important to know. Uh, and remember, when you hit Enter, it's going to go up here to the formula bar, but our answer will appear here. But I've had people ask me about this. Is this a relative change? Yes. If I happen to put several rows of data in here, this information will still appear here. It understands that and it will, so even though I said F5, it will take whatever the answer is in F5 and make it appear here. So this is great if you want to update your data. In other words, if you want it to always be current. Uh, if, if some of these numbers change, this number will change too. But what if you don't need that you, uh, and you don't really want to link? Well, you do have another option. That is to paste the value. If you paste the value, you right-click, copy it, 
and then right click and when you right click you'll get several options including paste values and when you do that then only the number will appear the formula will go away and so it won't really matter where your data is All right, let's build the formula. What we have here is the cost of an award. And we think we're going to be giving 14 away. But I want to see how much they're going to cost, because I want to try some other options to see how much more it could cost. So I, if it's $14 for the award, and I want to get 14 of them, then I would put in equal. And then I click, using formula mode, I, I would click in H, and this happens to be H9. Now H9 goes into the formula. Then I must type in the mu multiplication. When I type in the multiplication, it becomes a star. And then I click again for I9. Simple formula, right? And then, of course, I hit enter to finish, and there's my total. So that's what it costs if I were to give away 14 awards at $47 each. What would it cost if I had 16 or 18? Or, and I know 25 is the most that I would need. So I'm putting a few numbers in there. So now I've got some numbers in there, and I want to take this formula, and I want to drag it down using my autofill. But wait a minute, what happened? Autofill gave me zeros for my answer. And we expected there to be bigger numbers. So what happened? Well, remember the first one is going to multiply i with h. But the second one is going to be the next one down. So many people would put in 47 in here over and over and over and over again. However, my boss is thinking about maybe paying for the $51 um, uh, award. And if I put 51 in here, I'm, I'm going to have to change it all the way down again. So I'm going to, uh, and that, well, maybe we can afford the $54 award. Well, I'm going to have to keep changing numbers in here to keep up. Wouldn't it be better just to have that number in once? So if I put it in once, then I would want all these formulas to automatically update. If we make it an absolute reference, it won't change. It will automatically be correct. So instead of making it H9, I say I want it to absolutely be H9 by putting in dollar signs before the H and before the 9. And then I, when I click and drag down, it is exactly right. Now here's a tip. In the formula, I can highlight the H9 and then hit F4 and it will automatically put those dollar signs in for me. And that means it is absolutely H9 and when I use it in any formula, it will not be a relative reference. What will be the relative reference will be the I. That will become I10, I11, because that is relative. This is a way to remember it. The dollar signs, it's not relative, because they're not my family and not my relatives. My relatives have no money, and so this is how you can remember it. My relatives have no money, no dollar signs, whereas the absolute does. Let's move on to the last two tips, and that is on automatic calculation. This is a great thing that, especially in 2010, that a lot of people don't know about because it's not on by default. But if I want to automatically add up these numbers and just see what the answer is, I just click and drag over them or control click on them. And down here on the status bar, this is called the status bar, I can have the average, the count, the sum, even some other options show up automatically. Simply right click on the status bar and turn this tool on. This is called customizing the status bar and you just click on the ones that you want to show. Very cool tool. Here's a great way to use the formula bar as a calculator. Instead of copying and pasting as a value, if you don't care about the formula, you just want the value, uh, why not simply hit, don't hit enter, don't hit enter. Instead, you simply hit F9, and it automatically turns it into a value, not the formula. You can do whatever you want with it as a value. Join us next time. Bye.